Hello and welcome to another session of For University. My name is Kirsten, I am your host, and today I'm going to be talking about how to build a brand. So you're starting to make videos and you're seeing that engagement roll in and the followers are rolling in as well, but what does it mean to build a brand? It's not just making videos, it's more than just that. And today we have quite the expert on building a brand who has built a fantastic community of over 5 million people and has her own hashtags like hashtag team jazz and hashtag um, spreading smiles. So team jazz, jazz welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, thank you for having me. So I think we'll start off with how did you start your journey on TikTok? So I've been on the platform for quite a while. I'm a bit of a dinosaur on TikTok. I've been around <laughs> since musically days. So since about like 2015, that's when I actually jumped on the app for the first time. Um, musically wasn't really known about. It wasn't really like out there. You'd speak to people that you met in person and they'd be like, what's that? Like they would have no idea or they'd only know the app because their like 12 year old sibling used it. Used it. <laughs> so um, for me, it was like a bit of a like a hush hush thing. Like no one really, it was just your close friends that know about it and you don't really just go out there and be like, I use Musical.ly. But like <laughs> over the time, like since... 2015, obviously the app has evolved a lot. It was an amazing community back then and it's still like an awesome community now. It's just like grown obviously massively. Um, but I started off with just like transition videos, which have now kind of come back um, and like lip sync videos, like a massive thing on there. And then eventually it kind of evolved into like dance videos. And now I do my skits and I have like a whole range of different series that I've created on TikTok. But yeah, like it's been a fun journey and yeah, it's kind of gotten me to where we are now in 2021. <laughs> and how did you start to think about building a brand? Because you talk about when you, you joined Musical.ly in 2015, it was kind of just a bit of fun and hush, hush, I'm not going to tell anyone because this feels kind of cringe at this time. But when TikTok started to be really big and getting lots of growth, at what point did you think, okay, maybe I should really think more specifically about this and building a personal brand? When did that kind of happen? Yeah, I would say as like my growth kind of started in like 2017, 2018, um, that was kind of when I realized that maybe this would be something more and it might turn into like a career. But it was just the fact that I could kind of have like this close knit community um, that could like really have an idea of like who I was as a person beyond just my videos. So like things like going live were really what helped me to build that brand and just all of the organic things. It wasn't an actual like me, like in one moment deciding I'm going to put out merch or I'm going to do whatever it is strategically. It was kind of just a natural thing that happened over time and people got a sense of like what it was that I liked or what I don't like. And, you know, even like the color yellow, which is a massive part of my brand now, um, just that was naturally just part of like who I was. So things like that, um, that happened like kind of in, from the beginning kind of just end up being part of like where you are today. So yeah. And we're going to talk about obviously building a brand a lot today, but what does actually building a brand mean? And what does that mean to you as well? Yeah, I think building a brand is pretty much just creating a name for yourself and like having something that people can associate with you. So it might be in regards to like your personality and it might be that you're really sarcastic or that you're really like uplifting or upbeat, just things about you as a person, or it might even just be like the tone of your page overall, or it could be, I don't know, just your interests or your hobbies, things that kind of people can associate with you. If they think of like the color yellow, they might think of me, or if they think of whatever it is, like they can think of you because you kind of like associated yourself with that from the beginning. Um, so yeah, I guess that's kind of what a brand is as you start building it and also gives your followers like a clearer idea of who you are and what your purpose is and why you're doing what you're doing and yeah just making them kind of feel at home when they're on your page and just know what they can expect to see when they see you yeah like they know what they're in for when they see a video of you or they see the color yellow it's like oh maybe jazz is going to come into this video here because i see yellow and you're expecting they're expecting you and why is having a brand so important as well because yeah staying consistent for your followers that you were mentioning but also does it help set a routine for you too yeah, I would say so. And it kind of like gives you an idea of what you're going to create. Because if you've kind of started maybe like a series that your brand is associated with, like for me um, at the moment, I'm doing like my skit series and it's always set in a car scenario and I have my characters that I go with. So it definitely helps me to kind of create that routine because I love having that sense of routine and knowing what it is that I'm going to do, especially when it becomes your job or your career. Like you want to kind of know what you're going to be doing every day because you can't just kind of wake up. Well, you can, you can wake up and just say, this is what I'm going to do. But 
I'm not that spontaneous. <laughs> um, so yeah, d- definitely helps you plan, but also like I was saying, gives your audience a clear picture of who you are and like I said, what they can expect as well. Um, and yeah, it's, it's kind of what people will follow you for and stick around for because even as your content changes and evolves over time, you'll always have like your key values and your morals and the things that kind of create you as a person and also your brand. So, yeah. And you talked a little bit about the community side of things as well. Is it, do you feel like it's really important to have your community grow with your brand too? Yeah, I would say so. Because like naturally people are going to change and evolve over time. And if you have that like close connection with your community and they know who you are, they can kind of like grow with you and not feel as if like they have to stick to one specific type of content because that's all that they know you for. But it's better off, I would say, that they kind of know and love you for you as a person and then will naturally like evolve with you because over time, like we're all going to change and we're not going to be the same person from like, for example, me when I started in 2015 to now, like it's been what, six, seven years. So yeah, of course you're going to change like as things in your life change. And my followers have seen me like through finishing high school and then they've probably changed, like my following has changed since then and a lot of new people, but through that and then like graduating uni and like whatever it is I'm doing now. So like, yeah, they get to kind kind of come along with you on that journey and it's important that they can grow as you do. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And having that community just makes it such a more wholesome experience when building your content on TikTok. And do you find actually that your community has inspired you creatively, like with what sort of content that you create? Yeah, definitely. Because I really like love feedback from people and kind of getting an idea of what it is that they're enjoying seeing and maybe what they're not enjoying seeing. And that's kind of why I love going live, because other than getting that connection with people, um, at the same time, you can also kind of gauge like what it is that they're enjoying. You can just ask people, or you might even put up like a poll or you might get on live and ask people like, what is it that you want to see more of? Or like what specific character is it in the skits that you're loving to see? And you can incorporate that character more often. Like I had a drive through character <laughs> in my skits that was never kind of part of them. And one day I just decided to random, but it's in my grandma's shed because I live next door to my grandma. She has a shed there's a little window and that's my drive through anyway so one day I just I incorporated that and people were like oh we love this character and now it's become like a massive part of my storyline so yeah it's just it's crazy how people can like kind of become attached to certain parts of what you do and like your brand and you become attached to it at the same time so anyway that went a bit off track but yeah like no, I kind love of it. Getting, getting an idea of like yeah what people are enjoying is important because obviously you have to enjoy it but you also want your audience to love what you're doing as well. Absolutely. And when we talk about having a brand, you want to stand out. Like you have the big ones that you know, everyone knows those brands because they have that niche, you, you know what they're about. How do you make you as yourself a brand stand out? Mm, um, I think, well, standing out, first of all, I'd say it's one of the biggest parts about growing your brand because it's, obviously like the idea of being an influencer we all know it has a certain like (laughs) connotation to it or maybe it has like a specific look that you might imagine but now as like TikTok has grown especially I would say like it's all about um, authenticity and just that real sense of like who you are as opposed to like this perfect look that everyone like you know is is aspires to be or whatever like from back when like Instagram started for example so it's I love that now like we've kind of got so much of like more of an inclusive idea of like what an influencer might look like because there are people from all walks of life that are considered influencers or content creators um so yeah I'd say just like that authenticity is like what's really important about building a brand and like being able to stand out um and it's what people follow you for it's not that people will follow you because you look like all the other people who are like on the platform they that's not what people want to come to your page for they want to come to your page for you and for whatever your personality might be or your content or your sense of humor and yeah that's why it's important to just be yourself as much as possible Mm. and people come to your page especially for your live streams you know you do that quite a lot how do you uh, engage and build those relationships with your community there's so many different ways like i guess to kind of engage with your community that might be like through people DMing you and just responding to DMs or it might be through your comment section um, or live streaming. Those are all ways that you can kind of build that connection with your following. And not only will they learn about you, but you'll also learn about them. And it's nice to have that, like when you go live, for example, people coming back to your live that you actually know, it becomes not just like 
X, Y, Z, like username, one, two, three, four. Like mm-hmm. you actually know these people by name because they're your followers and they become your friends and it becomes like a wholesome community, which is really nice. So yeah, to be able to kind of know them as well and know what it is that they love and what they enjoy, um, it inspires you as well, as opposed to just you doing that for them. Hopefully it goes both ways. So yeah. And what do you like to do on live streams uh, as do you plan them or how do you try and like connect with your followers through that very authentic, you're just here, it's not scripted or anything. How, how do you work with that? I generally don't really do any planning for my live streams unless it's like maybe a specific like TikTok live stream that I'm going live and it's like scheduled for a certain time and we're going to be like cooking or doing something specific. But mm-hmm. other than that, I like to just be authentic and just myself so usually there is like a rough kind of idea of what I do on my lives that people will know and come to my lives for because they've been on my lives before and I've just kind of memorized that but it's not by any means like a script or anything it's just like in the beginning of my life like I like to ask questions to my audience and like to see how they're doing catch up with them because sometimes it can be a little while since like between going live and then yeah after that we do a lot of games so I'll like give them emojis or like numbers or even a sentence or something the first person who will comment it might get like a shout out or there's like some prize that you could win from it and then yeah it's just a way that like your audience can kind of have that like engagement like interaction on your live as opposed to just sitting there watching you talk for like an hour straight they're kind of getting to be involved in it as well which is what I love about live streaming um and then I like to do a lot of Q&A's as well towards the end of my stream they can ask me whatever it is that they want to know maybe that I've left out of like my videos that they haven't really heard about before. So yeah, just to kind of build that connection with them. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how I run my lives. It's pretty casual and chill. Nice. And with a brand, we're often told, or we, you know, the 101 of how to build a brand, you're often told to stay consistent. But do you find that you've evolved throughout your journey on TikTok? And is there any room for wiggle room, so to speak, between even just being on TikTok or even on other platforms? Yeah. Um, I would say so like I think there's definitely wiggle room like when you're you know across platforms especially because like you're going to show like different parts of yourself different sides of you and like when you're on for example YouTube you have like that opportunity for longer form content and people can get more of a sense of like who you are because you're making like maybe a 20 minute vlog um, or on your stories on Instagram for example you might just be doing like quick 15 second snippets of like your day and it's very relaxed and casual or TikTok might be like a dance video and it's got the music behind it. So it's kind of your creative side, but not so much of like maybe your personality and you actually getting to talk directly to the camera. So there's, yeah, always room to like show different parts of you and who you are and get like, give people that kind of more whole sense of you rather than just like one side. Um, But yeah, there's like, obviously consistency is important when it comes to like maybe your morals and your key values, because those are things that are you like despite like, whatever you do those kind of come along with you um but other than that like it's okay to change and grow and evolve and if you've built like that strong community your audience will just like come along with you on that journey yeah and what about finding a niche how long did it take you to find niche within building your brand yeah finding a niche is difficult in the beginning and when you start you can't really just find it straight away if you do you're very lucky but it's not likely that you'll find it immediately and it will take some time so trying different things and different styles of content is always like the best way I would say because trial and error is like yeah just the best so for me like the first thing I tried was like like I said the lip sync videos or musically <laughs> and at the time they were fun and it was what I love to do but then as you grow and evolve like you'll look back and now you're just like oh maybe it wasn't the best idea but <laughs> in the moment, like, you're having fun as long as you're having fun in that time and it's going to happen naturally so just start with whatever it is that you feel like you can do in that moment with like what you have. So you don't have to have like a ring light or have like all this equipment to start. You don't have to have a camera, just go outside, get some sunlight, go to a window and like get your phone and just start recording like anyone can. So yeah, I would say like just allowing yourself to grow and like figure out your niche based on whatever it is that you feel like trying in the moment. And then yeah, over time you'll figure out what it is that you want to do and what you love, but yeah. For me, I guess the dancing and like the skits and what I'm doing now didn't come into it until like the last year or two. So it takes time to find it and could be years or it might be even just a couple of months, whatever it might be. But yeah, like take your time and just have fun. 
yeah, and just have fun is really a, an important thing to do because if you're not having fun, then why are you doing it, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. People can often like lose interest and when you kind of just stick with one thing and you know that that's what gets the views or that's what gets people's attention, like you might just think that that's the way to go and to stick to it, but it's not going to last long because you're going to end up hating what you're doing and if it becomes your job, you're going to end up hating your job and it's <laughs> obviously like a lot of people, it becomes a big part of your life, so yeah. I would say just definitely to do what makes you happy and what you genuinely love. And then eventually, yeah, hopefully whatever success you are looking for will come out of it after that. Well, when let's say you have that inspiration to try something, not even just a little different, but maybe very different. Do you ever worry that you might lose some of your community or take a bit of a hit when it mm -hmm. comes to views? Like how do you, how do you work with that? Yeah, it's really tough because yeah, obviously, like I was saying, you know what works on your page and you know what your audience already knows and loves. So it's sometimes a bit scary to kind of step outside of that. Um, it's it's obviously fun to experiment and like everyone wants to try like something new. So I would say just to have a balance, like try maybe a few of your videos, like most of your videos for the week will be what you already love to do and what your audience also know well. But then also maybe give yourself a couple of videos a week that will be different and just experimental and something that might be completely different to what you do, or if you don't want to completely shock your audience, <laughs> just incorporate it like slowly into what you're already doing. So if you're already doing dance videos and you want to incorporate, like you want to start to become more into like edits or whatever it might be, maybe those edits can be incorporated into dance and like merge them slowly. And then eventually you can kind of transition into whatever it is that you want to go into. And it seems like with your brand, it is very much quintessentially you, like the yellow, and I have to ask, Yellow is a big part of your brand and the wall behind you is very yellow as well. Was that a choice with the brand or did that just kind of happen spontaneously? <laughs> so the yellow has always been a part of my personal brand before I had social media, just me as a person. <laughs> so it's always been what I loved. And then, yeah, it kind of just slowly became part of me and like people just knew that I love yellow and same with like my whole donut aesthetic. I'm obsessed with donuts. <laughs> You guys didn't know so it's just become like another thing that on my live streams people would always ask me about like the donut items that I had and I would always do like little hauls and be like I have this I have this pen I have this statue of this this and then it just became another part of like what people associated jazz with it was just donuts so yeah like things that are just quintessentially you and like the most authentic you just end up becoming kind of incorporated into your brand naturally I would say if you just be yourself yeah, and so you, it seems like you kind of lean into what your audience enjoys about your personal brand as well. Yeah, exactly. Because there'll be things that, you know, are more for like your offline self because maybe like that's just part of you and like maybe something with your family or with your friends that you don't really show as much of on social media and that's fine, like to separate it. I think it's important. Um, but yeah, like things that you know that your audience already know and love, like for me, the donuts or the yellow, um, <laughs> just like you can hide in that as much as you want. You can have fun with it. Like if you want to create merch out of it, or if you want to, I don't know, go live more and talk about it. Or like for me, bubble tea was another thing. And I made a lot of trying bubble tea videos because I knew that I love bubble tea, but like a lot of people, love, like most people <laughs> probably love bubble tea. So yeah, using parts about yourself that people can relate to and just, yeah, going with it. And it's, it's fun. <laughs> And how do you balance the online persona versus what you might want to try and keep private with your friends or your family? Like, how do you balance jazz from jazz? Yeah, it can be <laughs> a bit tricky, like to separate the jazz and jazz, because at the same time, like they're all kind of merged into one, like mm. your you and your brand is you. But I think kind of like base it off how much you feel like you want to put out online, like don't feel that pressure to show like every part about yourself because you don't have to and no one's like entitled to that like no one gets to tell you like this is what you have to put out and we need to know all this information about you because <laughs> you're a person like anyone else so most people don't put out everything about themselves online so yeah you can decide that and like you know for example for me like I know a lot of my own personal brand is just me as a person and who I am so a lot of what I do in real life is pretty much out there but I mean, that's what I'm comfortable with and I won't put out things that I don't want to. So mm. if you're someone who's more private and you only want to put out like, for example, artwork or maybe dance or something like very specific that your niche kind of is and that you want people to see, then that can be out there and the rest of your personality might just be for offline and that's totally fine. So 
just doing what you feel comfortable with and putting out as much as you feel is like, well, knowing that you could potentially be judged on that is important to note, I think, because yeah. that's the sad thing about online. Like people are going to kind of judge you for whatever it is that you're doing and they're going to ha- like, they're going to have an opinion on it and they can often put it out there and comment that, or, you know, there's trolls. So <laughs> just, yeah, like being comfortable with what it is that you're putting out is important. Absolutely. And we've talked a lot about the personal brand so far, but what about when other brands come and want to collaborate with you? What was that like the first time that a brand said, Jazz, we want you to try our product and, and make a video about it or post about it? Like, what, what had that feel like? It's really exciting. Yeah, the first time a brand wants to work with you, like, what? Like, this can actually become a job because you, like, I know for most people, like, you just start off for fun and, like, you're just doing it because you enjoy it and it's a passion of yours or it's a hobby. So, especially when you've been on for a long time and doing like, you know, like grinding and really putting effort <laughs> into your content. Like it's insane when it can like become a career path. Um, but yeah, it is very exciting. And I think it's just important to work with brands that you feel like really align with who you are and that your audience will feel like kind of incorporates naturally into your content and doesn't feel like they're just being sold something like a TV ad, for example, where it's just mm. like, you should like passively listen to what we're telling you to buy and like do it because that's just not how social media works. It's so much more authentic and it's all about engaging and like having that two-way connection, not just like one way. So yeah, I would say working with brands, it's exciting, but you have to really be careful of who you choose to work with because yeah, it can reflect a lot on you and your personality and the way your audience perceives you. Mm. And is that why you chose Bubble Tea as one of your brand deals? Because that's really a big part of who you are and what what you are interested in and what you like? Exactly. Yeah. Cause it just incorporate, like it worked naturally with what I was already doing. And I was, I would have been doing things with bubble tea, like regardless of whether that brand approached me or not, it wasn't something completely off track that my audience would be like, wait, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> um, so yeah, knowing that it's something that like also is suitable for your target demographic. Cause if you have an audience that's, you know, quite young, you have to be careful with what you're putting out because mm. would their parents be okay with that? Or, you mm. know, there's so many different factors to consider. So just knowing who you're targeting is really, really important as well. And what was that process like? Can you explain to us like from the beginning to the end of that whole process of working with the bubble tea company, how did that work? Um, yeah. So it was through my agency, um, the bubble tea company approached them and just said that they were interested in working with me. And then like my agency came to me and I was like, this is so cool. I get to create my own bubble tea. So yeah, I went into their like, bubble tea factory (laughs) it was pretty cool um very excited to go there and then yeah we did a a bunch of like trials with different flavors we had different types of pearls to try and like different um tea flavors and then like brewing them for different amounts of time and testing how it went and then i took a bunch of them home and got to do my own like further like trialing at home and then eventually we kind of came up with a bubble tea flavor that we liked And then, yeah, we put it out there and it seemed like people were enjoying it and loving it. And there was obviously like the marketing side as well and creating like the little pamphlet that goes with it and like taking, like doing a little photo shoot for it and coming up with like a little bio. So there's so many different parts that came into the process, but it was so worth it and a lot of fun. And what do you think is the the one big brand deal that you want to do one day? What, What sort of thing would you be really excited to do? I have so many things that I would just love to do, but one thing that I've really had my mind set on for a while is to create my own donut. So I'd love to create a yellow donut that's super colorful, like have sprinkles on it, like just a fun donut that just is me as a person, a team jazz donut or a spreading smiles donut. I don't know. So yeah, I'd love to do that one day. That's one big thing. And also um, someone I would love to collaborate with is Lizzo as a personal (laughs) brand. And she's just like one of my, idols obsessed with her so yeah that's someone I would love to club with but there are so many like amazing creators that I follow that I would just love to hang out with in person so hopefully after 2021 hopefully when things are kind of opening up again we'll get to do that more and not just virtually (laughs) absolutely it's much more fun to connect in person and I wish you were here today so we could do that (laughs) but what about um creating uh Deliverables like podcasts or books or even presenting live. What sort of things are excite that excite you for the future? Yeah, there are a lot of things that again, like that I would like to get into. And that's what I love about social media, that it kind of can open so many doors with different things. So for example, the bubble tea thing just happened from me loving bubble tea, and then next minute, like 
I was working with a bubble tea brand, which is really cool. So just, yeah, whatever it is that you love to do, like knowing that you can have, like from social media, you can get the opportunity to go further into that. If you like work hard and just be authentic and have fun. Um, but for me, like, yeah, I really love like writing. So I'd love to get into more like writing kind of stuff in 2022. And then also like, I love like just going on live and like chatting with people. And I thought maybe presenting could be fun, like maybe a kid's show or like, you know, there's like Saturday Disney kind of vibes. I just love those kind of things. Just obsessed. So maybe one day getting into like hosting or presenting. Um, it's another thing I'm super interested in. So yeah, it's fun to like get to experiment on social media on your own platform where you're comfortable and then realizing that that could lead into something much more than that. Absolutely. And it seems like you've got quite a few big ideas and exciting plans to come ahead. How do you plan for that? And how far ahead do you plan with these sorts of goals and setting these goals? A lot of them like are long-term goals that obviously can take quite a while to like build the connections with people or the companies or whoever it might be. Might be. But I think like working with, for me, an agency that like my agency that I work with, we have that like close connection where they know what it is that I'm looking to do in the future. And like, they kind of have an idea of whatever it is that like, I'm into so it's good to kind of have a support system around you whether that's like family friends or agencies or whatever it might be to like of people who know what it is that you want to do so yeah. that then like you have that support behind you um and even just like reaching out yourself whether it might be to like different brands or, or to like a media network or like someone that you've really like aspired to work with and having I guess like your social media page is almost like a show reel in a lot of senses you've got that whole like backlog of content behind you that you can show that you are diverse and you can do comedy or you can dance or you can sing or whatever it is that you do, um, which is pretty cool about social media. So yeah. Oh, fantastic. And it sounds like you've got some really big ideas and really exciting. I hope all your dreams come true with that. But oh, another question I want to yeah. ask about um, working with other brands, how do you balance not losing your personal style when collaborating with these brands? Mm, yeah so I would say like when you're doing brand collaborations just keeping in mind who you're targeting and if you know your core audience and who they are and who that demographic is and what they're into then it will kind of help you to tailor that content towards them and also towards like whatever it is that you generally do anyway um so yeah like that all comes with like having that strong community and knowing them as people as well um but making the content when you work with a brand, like making sure that it's something that regardless of whether it was a branded video or not, um, just making sure that it's something that they can enjoy or take something away from. So if you might be like a comedy creator making sure that they can still be entertained by that piece of content, or if it's something more informative, making sure again, that they can do the same thing. So yeah, even though it is branded, it doesn't mean that it has to be a very like, buy this, like it doesn't have to be like those old kind of advertisements. Absolutely. And with your content, whether it's your regular content, a skit or going through the drive through or even a branded video, what's one thing that you want your audience to take away from your videos and from your platform and your content? Yeah, for me, like the number one thing I've always wanted from my content is just for people to be able to smile and feel good for that period of time. They're watching my content and hopefully to take that away with them and like something I'm always trying to like talk about as much as I can is just like kindness and spreading positivity and spreading smiles is my hashtag. So it's just, yeah, it's important to me to make sure that I'm like putting out good energy to my audience. And whenever I get on live, I like to make sure that I'm feeling good and in like a good kind of like state of mind and feeling hyped. Cause I love kind of when people can get on my live and be like, Oh, like I was having a bad day and this live like made me smile today. So yeah, Aww. for me, like that's what I love about social media that you can have an impact on, the people who are watching because it's a massive thing and you can forget sometimes like like the impact that you can have until someone says like or comments it or sends you a dm saying how much what you do means to them like it really mm. is like a wake-up call and reminds you like the people are really there and they're real people who are watching and what you're doing means a lot so just yeah to keep like doing your best and to motivate you to keep going with it oh that is so beautiful you've got me right in the feels right there <laughs> oh and there's, there's no question as to how you've managed to grow this incredible community of over 5 million people and to have it not just be 5 million people, but a real community where people are building connections within the community as well and with you. It's, it's, it's 
Oh. It's just so gorgeous. So congratulations on that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> But now we have uh, some questions from our audience who have sent in some questions for you. So if you don't mind, we'll go in and have a look at some of them. One question is, have you ever deleted a video and why? Well, so, okay, yes, I've definitely deleted quite a few videos in my time. <laughs> um, but I would say like from, well, recently, I would say the, there's been two main reasons I've deleted videos. One was going, like scrolling really far back into my page and just finding old videos that I was too embarrassed to have out there knowing that people <laughs> can scroll back but not to delete everything I know a lot of people do a massive like clear out and just get rid of everything that was from like the last few years which I could never do because I feel like it's all the memories and I want to have it there so anyway that's one reason but also I've deleted videos in the past where you're kind of just like oh I don't feel like this performed as well as it could have and let me like repost or let me just like re like, recreate it or something but I think don't yeah I would say the number one thing I've learned over the last especially the last year is to not delete content because of the way it performs because often after maybe the first day or second day it might not do as well as you hoped but after a few days it can just suddenly pop off and people will actually start seeing it and engaging with it and loving the video so just yeah don't delete content <laughs> <laughs> Just see see how it goes. Let it test the waters for a little while and just distribute exactly. through the algorithm. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> now, our second question is more about your brand again. How did the hashtag spreading smiles come about? Like what made you choose to spread that? Um, well, I guess just from the beginning when I was live streaming, that was always kind of what I felt like my purpose was and why I was going live because I wanted people to smile. I wanted to just kind of have that fun interaction, but I don't really remember when I actually created the hashtag itself. It was a few years ago when I had first started live streaming, I think like roughly maybe 2017 or something. Um, but it kind of gave me like a sense of like purpose and reminded me of why I'm doing what I'm doing. So it, now it's just a hashtag that I put on all my videos. Cause just like what I do, like with team jazz and spreading smiles, they're my two things, but yeah, like, I don't know, it was just kind of a way that I could see, like, in words, something that, like, really meant a lot and, like, gave me the reason as to, like, why I'm doing this and just always is that constant reminder of, like, why you're doing what you do because it's easy mm. to forget, like, with all the numbers and the likes and views and all those crazy things that people get too, like, lost in. It's easy to get lost in, especially mm. on social media. So, yeah, it kind of just brings you back to, like, why you started and why you want to do what you're doing. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Thank you so much, Jazz. I think we've learned a lot about how to build a brand and what to keep in mind when you are building your brand. I certainly have as well. So thank you so much for being here. And do you have any final thoughts for our audience on building a brand or even just being on TikTok in general? Final thoughts, just like literally being yourself. I think there are like so many people out there who are just the same as the next person and it's because like often you can just feel like you have to fit into a certain mold on social media so just remembering that that's what makes you stand out like being authentically you and it's not like you know back in the day when people felt like they had to be a certain look to become a content creator or whatever it is that you want to do um yeah just knowing that being you is what people will follow you for people aren't there to see someone who's exactly like everyone else. They want to see someone who's unique and that's what makes you you. So yeah, just being yourself and that's it. Just have fun. <laughs> just have fun and be yourself. I love that. Thank you so much, Jazz, for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure yeah. and we look forward to seeing more of your videos on TikTok. Yay, see you on TikTok. <laughs> so for this week's homework, try and build your personal brand with your videos. Take what we've learned from Jazz today, include maybe a personalized hashtag. Don't forget hashtag for university as well. Maybe include a prop or a certain type of color or style within your videos. Or maybe even try and do a live stream and connect with your audience to build that connection and build your brand. Thank you for tuning in. And once again, my name is Kirsten. You can find my content at Astro Kirsten and go and follow Jazz as well at JasmineTXO. And we'll see you next time.